Hello and welcome. Well, if I was to say to you, if you are to do one thing today, it's to take some time out for yourself. What's the first thing that comes into your mind? You know, with being a busy mum or dad, you may see this as being impossible, now, especially now um, throughout the COVID-19 era and all the stresses and all the life challenges that are part of just living through this pandemic. And let's face it, life is always busy with so much to do. Now, I have a qu another question for you. Did you know that Beyond Blue has stated that one in six women suffer depression and one in three women experience anxiety? Also, that women suffer higher rates of PTSD and eating disorders than men. That said, in this interview today, we are going to tackle these issues and talk about the reasons why looking after yourself is so important for our mental health with our special guest, Deb Harmon. Now, Deb is going to uh, discuss why all parents and caregivers need to make it a priority to look after yourself, especially now and throughout this COVID-19 era. Now, a little bit about our guest. Now, Deb is a certified life coach, a master NLP practitioner, a hypnotherapist and certified relationship workshop facilitator. Deb's got a lot going on and this is awesome. Now she's also a mother of five and a grandmother of six and over the last 10 years uh, Deb has studied human behavior and simply why we do what we do. Thank you so much for joining us today Deb. How are you? I'm um, well thanks Rachel and thank you so much for having me here. Um, yeah, it's great to be with you and I feel honoured that you've invited me to join you today. Just wonderful and once again really grateful for your time. Now to begin with, we've all heard the analogy uh, many times in our life that we can't pour from an empty cup and this saying above all else really is true. You know, if we don't have enough energy for ourselves, how is it possible that we have enough energy to give to others and that being our children, our partner, our family and friends. Initially, I just want to know what are your thoughts on this concept? Yeah, absolutely. Totally agree with it. Um, you know, I mean, my other favourite one is the oxygen mask in the aeroplane. Yes. You know, where the parents have to put theirs on first before they can take care of their children. Yep. So, yeah, absolutely agree 100%. So important. And in addition to this, I guess, you know, it's not only about the amount of energy that we have, but it's also about the quality. You know, we're just generally happier and nicer people just to be around and life is generally better and just a tad easier, I guess it's fair to say. And maybe this is one of life's little secrets. I don't know. What are your thoughts? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, when we feel nourished ourselves, we give off a better energy. Yes, 100%. So you know, that's just, that's just so important for the people around us. And especially, you know, when we are feeling stressed, um, yeah, it's super important to, to make sure you keep, you keep filling your own cup. Yes. In particular, now you work with women to empower them to live their life in accordance with who they truly are and to live life on their terms and to love what they do every day. That sounds awesome. Um, I would love to know, have um, you seen, um, well, how have you seen, sorry, um, COVID impact the lives of women and in particular mothers in recent months? Yeah, well, I think when it really hit home, I was actually doing a, you know, a, a, what was it, a FaceTime with my daughter. And, um, you know, we live 2,000 miles apart, so COVID or not, I'm not there every day. And I could sort of see how, how stressed she was and how she seemed to have lost her confidence. But I, I guess this problem isn't necessarily isolated to just women. It, it's parents and caregivers overall, but for the, for the moment we're, I guess, addressing more um, women um, and, but you know, women and, and parents in general are doing an amazing job of juggling That's... family work, um, relationships, jobs, and all the ob obligations um, that accompany the roles, uh, you know, of being a parent, running a household, keeping your job down and I guess COVID really has put an increasing amount of pressure on parents while juggling all these different roles um, but women well, in particular often forget to take care of themselves don't they because being consumed with all the needs um, of others which leaves their um, little time for their own, own needs I'd love to know from your perspective why is it so important for mums to put themselves first Okay, so just just I just want to go back a set to what you were just yeah. saying about um, you know 
we're putting the children first. And in my experience, that's, that's sort of going back to our upbringing. And, you know, when you, your parents, your mother, your grandmother, your great grandmother, they parented differently to us. And that's how we learn to parent. So when we get stressed, our subconscious goes back to the way they parent. Now, mm. you might be a little different, a bit generation, but my mother and my grandmother were stay-at-home parents and their role was basically to cook, clean and bring up the children. So when we get stressed, our subconscious mind takes over and then we go back to more along the lines of our upbringing than what we necessarily believe. So that's why we change our behaviours. Does that, is that kind of making sense? I completely understand. So this is a learned behaviour um, and we've learnt these behaviours as, as to basically, as you said, what our parents and our grandparents and what's been basically learnt down from generation to generation. That's, that's right. how so, and why we do what we do. Is that right? That's exactly right. So while we know that we should be taking care of ourselves and probably up to January this year we were, mm. now with all the stresses that have come into play, we've sort of forgotten about ourselves a bit. Yes. And just, yeah, and just forgotten to bring ourselves to the forefront of caring for ourselves. Well, that being said, you know, why do you find that stressful times like we're living through at the moment um, are even more or are more important than ever really to place a high importance on health and well-being? So, you know, I, I mean, overall, and generally, I guess people find it more difficult, I think, to, to, to be able to look after themselves and put an importance on self-care and those types of things during times of high yeah. stress also. What are your thoughts? Yeah. Well, I think it's well documented that stress leads to a lot of health issues anyway. Yes. And we're sort of taught to, to pull away from the stress. So I think now more than ever, it's really, really important to find strategies to, to make that time for yourself. And it really is about strategizing and um, even planning your day and working out where you fit into your day and what your priorities for you are. Mm -hmm. And that's, and as you said, that's for men and women as well. Yeah. And, you know, in a family, it needs to be a shared thing where both parents give each other time out so that, yeah, they've got what, you know, they've got what they need. And would you say thinking like this is um, not being selfish, rather being selfless? And I guess the more we have for ourselves, talking about energy, the more that we do have to give to others, as we were just saying before. Yeah, that's right. It's it's certainly not a selfish act. It's yeah. Um, yeah. I think it can it can it come it encompasses caring for the family as a unit as a whole. Yeah. Uh, overall, um, just getting back to mental health for a moment, you know, what are the implications mm -hmm. for our mental health if we don't take time out for ourselves? If we don't look after ourselves in the first instance, then my concern is we are going to sort of start going on that downward spiral mm -hmm. into mental health issues. And this is, you know, obviously the isolation, the lack of connectedness at the moment that we have. Yes. Um, and that's so important that we really need to try and find a way to remain connected as society is just generally being pulled apart, if you like. Yes. Um, because it's that connectedness that really supports our mental health. I wanted to address something that you mentioned before also um, about the majority of our behaviours are learned early in life by the adults really that nurtured us. Um, and I uh -huh. guess um, I wanted to explore this concept a little bit more if I could. And look, I, I really believe it is confronting to realise that the bulk of what we do say, think, feel really is as a result of what we learned um, from our parents in our childhood. Um, and this can pass down behavioural traits um, from gen generation to generation. Of course, this can be a good experience and also can be bad. Um, but, you know, we've uh -huh. all heard the saying a million times, you're just like your father or you're just like your mother and those types of things as well. So, you know, I guess if someone is wanting to break a pattern um, and they do not want to pass down, let's say, in particular, a negative behavioural pattern to their children. Yeah. Um, in your yeah. opinion, how can they start to make that change? 
Um, okay, so the first thing is, because when we have these negative patterns, we tend to try to deny them. Of course. So the first thing is to accept them. Accept that they're real. Yep. Accept that it happened. And then once you've accepted it, maybe you need to forgive for it, depending, you know, depending on what it was. And then when you've gone through that sort of process, then you can begin to move on and move away from it and, and the, you know, break, break free. I think even just initially getting to the point when you realize that, that you have adapted a behavioral pattern that has been passed down, let's say from um, your grandmother to your mother and to yourself, um, and or it may, may be something that's been passed down, let's say from your grandfather to your father, and as a daughter that you've maybe adapted those sort of behavioral things, it can be really confronting mm -hmm. to even just come to that realization that you're doing things on instinct and acting and behave, behaving in such a way that you don't necessarily have control of that aren't necessarily maybe the best way um, to be able to treat others but you know um, getting to that point of realizing that you have these behavioral traits that you want to change for the sake of not passing them down you want to break that cycle so the ch your children and it's not going to be passed down for generations to come is a really big realization and it is confronting um, but you know from that have you worked with many people in that instance and helped try to have them break these cycles yeah yeah i've worked with a few more so when i was doing the hypnosis which i've now moved away from mm -hmm. um because a lot of these things are obviously buried down in your um subconscious, in your subconscious. Mind. yeah so that is you know that is a really good way to to break these cycles and bring these up to the surface and would you say um, being in your subconscious mind, then they need to really change their underlying beliefs um, and decide what they actually believe, uh, think and feel instead of having um, those being defined by what their parents think and feel, would you say? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Because a lot of us just say, I'm not going to behave like that. I'm not going to do that. They yes. never have a clear path of what they are going to do. Yes. So it's, it's about actually understanding what are your personal beliefs as opposed to saying, well, I, I believe this because this is what my parents believe, or I, I believe this is because this is what I've always known. I don't know any different. It's, it's about them sort of saying, well, what are my beliefs about this situation? And once they, they've defined what their personal beliefs are, that's where the change actually happens. Um, and then they just need to maybe act on those um, behaviours um, and sort of, sort of go about their business every day, but just knowing that they, they're making their own decisions as opposed to them being what they've always done. Would you say? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because once you've got it clear what you want, and then it is possible over time because your subcontract, subconscious mind is trained through repetition. Yes. Now, there's a saying out there that it says it takes 21 days to change a habit. I don't know if you've heard that or not. Yeah, absolutely. That, that, yeah. So that, but look, that varies greatly. You know, some people can change like that. Others, it takes longer. It can take three months. But if you sort of continually practice what your beliefs are, then over time you can overcome it and you can set a new footprint, if you like, in your subconscious. Nice. Well, I guess the, the, the question now is really, how is this relevant to parents um, in particular um, with regards to, you know, being um, locked in, in the COVID-19 sort of lockdown phase at the moment? Yeah. Great Work idea. Work as a team. Work yep. as a team. Very much you so. Know? Yeah. It's not mum here and dad here. It, it, it's got to be teamwork. And then when you start to do that, you'll bring that sense of connection back that we've all kind of lost in a way at the moment. And also getting back to what um, we were saying before about breaking patterns, may, would you say maybe it's an ex one example may be that, um, that you may think that taking care of yourself is selfish because that's what your mum thought um, mm -hmm. and or things that, that that's been said around the household when you were growing up as a child um, and the fact that now with COVID um, you need to break that cycle and understand that taking care of yourself, as we said at the very start of the interview, it's not self selfish, it's selfless and that you actually need to break that cycle. So this, this would be a perfect 
example of a behavioral pattern that you've seen as a child your whole life that, you know, your parents think that by looking after themselves, it's actually a selfish act, but in fact, it's not. We actually do need during this COVID-19 era to be looking after ourselves and to making sure that our cup is full. So we are going to be able to be a better parent, better friend, better, um, you know, relative to anyone that we're in contact with. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Yeah, okay. Um, put yourself first. I mean, you know, when you're planning your day, make your first thought yourself. You know, how, how am I going to get 10 minutes? Or if you, have a, if you know that you have a low point in a day, ha, what am I going to do earlier in the day so I don't hit this low point? Yeah. Um, is, but, it, is it finding 10 minutes? Is it food? Is it good nutrition? you know, find something that's going to, just going to boost your whole physical self, basically. And it's funny, I mean, self-care, a lot of the time we do think of, you know, normal sort of, it's a very cliche thing, isn't it, in the media about looking after ourselves and it's about a massage and a facial, all these these things. But self-care isn't necessarily that. It may just be whatever gives you energy, as you just said, um, and finding that um, and then finding the point in the day when you can, ensure that you have even if it's just that 10 minutes a day if it means it may be you just have your coffee by yourself in the morning or what have you I mean how else from your perspective do you think parents can take uh, care of themselves and what advice do you have yeah um well obviously the time out um look some of the other things and I, I'm I'm harping back now to when my, mine were younger but um I had four children, then I had a big gap of 14 years and then I had another one. And my life was just full on because we had basketballs, we had soccer and I had a baby and, you know, <laughs> trying to balance everything. And one of the things I always did, and this was just so simple thinking back on it, was I always carried a book in my bag. And if the youngest one ever fell asleep in the pram, I just headed straight to the closest coffee shop and bought a coffee and read my book. <laughs> and okay. So self-care is not about, as you said, your nails and your massage. It's just finding that 10 minutes. And what is and, it that, and knowing what it is, it actually sort of tops up your energy a little bit, I guess, as well. That, that, that's it. I mean, it's nice to have your nails done. I love having my nails done. <laughs> no. but that's, that's not self-care to me. Yes, it's knowing what self-care is to you and is actually going to make a difference. Valid point, Deb, and I totally agree with you. And what is for, for one person is not going to be for another. But there's another thing you shared in your, um, a great mindfulness tip that you shared in your article that I'd love to read out. So this is quoting yeah. you. Um, yeah. This is your, your wording from the article. One of the easiest ways um, to plan your day is to set reminders on your phone um, uh, of when you need to do something. And that way you can focus on what you're doing um, and a know and a, have a schedule for your day. So mindfulness, yep. that being, I guess, the, the act, or do you find, I guess, that act of mindfulness, um, that being focusing on the present and letting go of the past, not worrying about the future, but only focusing on the, the present moment um, actually yep. helps um, reduce stress and anxiety. What are your thoughts? Yeah, look, absolutely, it does. I've actually got a thing where I keep my diary down the side of my computer now. And then I know exactly what time I'm doing what. So I know when I've got to speak to Rachel. I know when I've got to go to Pilates. I know what when I'm walking the dog. But if it's, if it's scheduled, then, you know, you've got time for anything. And, I mean... Parents, and especially those now with the children home for remote learning again, schedule a children's day. Yes. Okay. So between nine and 10 o'clock, you've got that schoolwork. Between 11 and 12, you play outside. But between 2.30 and 3 o'clock, depending on their ages, you've got quiet reading. So the, so the key... 
the key is to scheduling. We each have the same amount of time in our day each day, just know That's at what point right. and almost, almost like a routine. So it doesn't matter if what state you're in, but either way, if you are in full lockdown or if you're sort of easing out of restrictions, let's say in another state, the better we yep. have our day structured, um, I guess the better that we can actually ensure that we are making time. That way we have no excuses. We can always find the time to be able to have, have self-care. What are your thoughts? That- yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, 100%. And if, you know, most children as well love routine. So yes. if you've got that daily schedule, they know what's coming and they know when their quiet time is. And that's mum's quiet time. You can, you can be in the same room together and have quiet time. Yes. And, and we, we do yeah. find in speaking to a lot of psychologists, they do say this helps reduce the children's anxiety also because they know how, how and what is planned at what time as well. So yeah. um, that's right. And it's not, it isn't just parents, it's children going through anxiety as well. A hundred percent. Yes. They're bouncing off us. Yes. So yeah, absolutely. Make a plan for your day, schedule it. And then everybody knows what everybody's doing and, you know, don't switch on the commercial television. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if you're going to have a movie, have a movie. Don't don't put commercial television on that's going to be interrupted with um, in news bulletins or whatever. I don't yeah. know. I haven't watched commercial television for probably 10 years, but, you know. <laughs> well, you know, Deb, we've spoken about some really fun stuff today um, and, and important topics as well. Um, if you were to summarise your key messages, what would they be? Okay, so I think as you said, it would be come, come down to that being mindful, scheduling, focus on you, work out what is self-care for you. Yes. Don't worry about what's self-care for your friend, just, just focus on you um, and just take some time to look inward and just, just breathe. Yes, absolutely. And I guess just admitting... Breathe that we need help um, is, I guess, far from admitting weakness also. Um, But getting back to the point of um, mental health, which we addressed at the very start of this topic, um, if anyone watching or listening um, needs support or would like someone to speak to, of course, there are a lot of support services available here in Australia. And um, in the show notes, um, we will provide numbers for for Lifeline, uh, for Beyond Blue, kids helpline and headspace um but all by all means um you know it's as i said admitting um that you need that you need help is is far from weakness um so this is something that we each need to be very aware of and um these support service helplines are definitely there to be able to help and assist us because let's face it you know living through a pandemic is is not the easiest thing for anyone by all by any stretch of the imagination and it's getting harder i think it's actually getting harder as, as we go along i don't know what are your thoughts um yeah no look i agree with you 100 percent i mean Um, you know, Melbourne's not the only place that's gone back into lockdown. There's a few others across the world. Mm. And I think this second wave is, yeah, I think it's bringing out a lot more stresses in people. Yes. And especially now that people are on the move as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm finding, I live in a tourist town and I'm finding there's a lot of angst against travellers. You know, some people just don't want them. And yeah, you can see the stresses and the anger starting to build in people again. And we just need to avoid this to just, just not do it. Just, I don't know, practice, practice loving each other and caring. Yes. And, um, and like we said, you know, if people do need support um, would, or would like someone to speak to, there are all the support services available and we'll have those. Absolutely. Absolutely. Deb, if people got any questions for you and or want to reach you after this interview today, whereabouts can they find you? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I guess probably the easiest way is my website. There's a contact form on the website, which will come through via email. Mm-hmm. Um, so my email, uh, my website is just ultimatelifeshift.com. Wonderful. Thank you, Deb. I've loved this chat. You take care and stay safe. Take care. Thanks, Rachel. You too. Bye. Bye.